Okay, a real life Fizbo selling nightmare. Now, let me give you my disclaimer. This is an actual example of a major real life screw up on a Fizbo transaction. Now, of course, there's not going to be names divulged. No one's going to be publicly embarrassed. But this is real life, folks, an actual situation that actually happened. And you're going to see examples in the email chain to show you. And hopefully, this is going to prove a valid point, maybe even a few points. But please watch the video and just see what you think. Now we've got the old, the old problematic situation here: the inexperienced buyer's agent and the Fizbo seller that doesn't have any agent. Now, not that the buyer's agent and the and the actual Fizbo seller are working against each other, even though it's probably going to feel like that at sometimes for the agent. Actually, they're you know for the most part going to be working together. You got to remember, the only one in this scenario that's getting commission is the buyer's agent, right? So a lot of times, I know us as buyer agents feel that we have to double the work. Doesn't have to be the case, but the point is, in this situation right here, the example I'm going to show you, we have a recipe for disaster. We do have an inexperienced buyer's agent, and we have a Fisbo seller that does not have any agent support. So remember this key part of this email correspondence I'm going to show you. Monday is a closing date. This correspondence is on Friday. Folks, that's the day before closing. That's the last business day before closing. That's a Friday. And you have a closing Monday? It's not good. So this is the email from the title closer to the agent. Check on survey for this property. Thank you. And this is the email back from the buyer's agent. Seller does not have a survey. Why wasn't this ordered? Um, Folks, my stomach just hurts reading this because I can already tell and feel in my gut from 18 plus years of experience. I know exactly where this is headed and it's not good. And this is from the title company. We do not order surveys and we have not been contacted by a survey company to get certifications. Okay, let me just clarify something and point something out real quick. I know a lot of people are going to be thinking, well, they're already going to be putting blame in, in, on the title company. Now, I will say, maybe the title company could have been a little bit more proactive, possibly, but it's not, honestly, it's not their job. And in my area, number one, we don't, third parties don't order the services for most agents, okay? So it's not normal, number one. Um, and if it is normal or if it does happen, you damn better sure have a dang checklist and you better verify when these services were ordered, which in this case you're going to see didn't happen. And before I show you the agent's response, I just want to say I don't agree with it. I think it's in very poor taste. It's unprofessional. Um, it's doing what I gripe about agents all the time. It's taking totally blame and pointing it elsewhere. The agent should have just sucked it up. The bad thing is that the seller stated it would have been different if the agent would have just said, hey, I made a mistake, didn't follow up, dropped the ball, it's my fault, sorry, I'm going to do everything in my power to fix it and get this thing closed as soon as possible. But the agent didn't do that. They blamed the title company. Not only did they blame the title company with just bad choices in their email, they also got the seller so fired up and got the seller yelling and blaming the title company. And, you know, of course, now the seller knows that it was not the title company's fault. It was the agent's fault. Honestly, I mean, the, seller, the agent just didn't keep up with the transaction, didn't keep up with the services being ordered. And it's ridiculous. But anyway, would have been nice to have known in the beginning that you do, don't do order surveys. First title company that doesn't do that, I'll also make a review and state that so every other realtor knows this. Like I said, in my area, we order our own stuff. Uh, in this agent's area, I guess they're used to high dollar condos and they're lazy and they have title companies do the work for them. Um, no matter if the title company does it, you're still, you still got to okay it. Okay. They're not just going to do it without you saying something. Okay. No one, no company's going to do that. They're not just going to order it. If they do, they've lost their ever of minds and the owner or office manager better have their head examined because they're losing a ton of money probably in title searches. 
but this is one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, make this video because this response from the title closer f from to that email to that I mean to that agent is just priceless. I think it's wonderful. It's right on point. It's professionally done. I'm not gonna read it all, but I am gonna ad lib a little bit. Uh, you can stop the video if you want to read through it, which I suggest you should. It's very nicely done in my opinion. But basically, title companies can only order surveys if they have instructions from the realtor as to who they want to use and who will pay the surveyor in the event the transaction cancels. Bingo, folks. They're not going to order the services without having something saying they're not responsible, okay? Um, I know in our area in years past, there's been a huge problem with services like surveys, especially WDO or pest inspection getting ordered. And because the deal didn't never close or it didn't, you know, it fell through, these guys aren't getting paid. They have to track down the you know the clients the agents are the and so it goes back to who ordered it so survey companies are the good ones just aren't gonna order the services without having something to, you know to prove it in writing you know telling them to order it so once again the agent screwed up dropped the ball and should have just took the blame but they didn't okay another issue with this that I want to point out is this buyer agent requested the seller's property disclosures four days okay four days prior to closing to comply with their office guidelines okay that doesn't benefit the buyer one bit getting the you know the seller disclosures property disclosures four days before closing it's way past the time for that right I mean ridiculous um, it's just this is just a good example of this transaction and how bad it was and unfortunately inexperience kills and this is you know this is what's happening here now I want to point out a couple of things and I want to rub other agents wrong that are required to get this, you know, extra documentation. But a seller does not have to sign or execute any document that is not required by either state, local, or federal law. If a document does not pertain to the transaction, you don't have to sign it. And what happens around here a lot is, for example, is agents will have documents just to disclose that there's not something, you know, which is just not necessary. For example, if you have a house that's built after 1978, you do not have to have a signed lead-based paint disclosure. If your home is not located in an HOA, you do not have to sign an HOA disclosure stating it's not in an HOA. There's no reason for it. Now, another thing, seller property disclosures are not mandatory, but folks, they are extremely, let me emphasize, extremely helpful and should be filled out prior to placing the property on the market whenever possible. And this is one of my gripes. People try to get out of this all the time, and you'll hear agents say, "Well, the seller's never been, you know, owned the property. Well, they never, you know, been to the property, been in the property. It doesn't matter. Half the stuff is generic, and they can get it from public records. They can make one phone call to the, you know, county offices and get the information. But it helps. But anyway, they're not, they're not, you know, they're not mandatory, and that's just it. So remember that if you're a Fisbo." You're getting asked to sign a bunch of documents that do not pertain to the transaction. You do not have to sign them. You can to make it easy and comply and make the agent's life better. But um, this stuff, you know, right before closing, asking for it is ridiculous. All right, a couple of key points I want to go over. No one's perfect and mistakes happen. Just remember when you do a FISBO seller and a buyer's agent deal, you're taking a professional out of this transaction. You're losing the knowledge the help um, the extra set of eyes the extra person who has monetary involvement to help push the deal to closing you're losing that when you only go down to one agent if you're a client a buyer or seller just research your agent experience matters there's just not a benefit to using an agent with no experience I mean it, this isn't a very important decision transaction just remember just do a little research this kind of kills me in this scenario that we're talking about right here is a perfect example of this agent does just does not have the experience needed all right in the long run it's really hard for a Fisbo seller to negotiate on the same level as an agent um, I like to say think of it like the odds at a casino like how the house favorite for blackjack or craps you know how their odds get much better when you go to like the roulette table or something ridiculous like Kino okay it's the same way the odds are not stacked in your favor fair as a Fisbo seller to deal 
you know, with agents. Um, and I just see it every day. And I know a lot of people think they can. And yes, you can pull off a successful deal. Yes, it's possible. But in the long run, you just will not compete. Okay. Any agent that has any amount of experience just knows more. It's based on just knowledge and experience and just, you know, you know, just doing it and seeing what works and what doesn't work. My point is, in the long run, you're not going to compete on the same level as real estate agents when it comes to negotiations and selling the house on your own. Okay, for real estate agents, don't ever rely on anyone to order your client services but you or your assistant. It's going to end up biting you in the butt, I promise you. In the long run, it will end up biting you. There's no reason in the world but laziness to have a third party order the stuff for you, okay? And if you do have them do it, there's only one or two things you could possibly even do. And honestly, that's that's really the survey. You need to document the date it was ordered, who it was ordered from, and by who. You should know everything the date it was ordered because that date is a date you can go from from the rest of the transaction. If you don't know and you wait to the end, you're going to look bad. And this is exactly the situation we're dealing with here. Okay, another thing for real estate agents, always have a checklist and verify the date services were actually ordered. Write it down. I mean, once again, there's not that much you can actually do, okay? But the survey and the appraisal, those two things will bite you in the rear end if you don't verify when they're ordered because it never fails. I see it all the time. You get close to the end of the transaction, you're like, what about the survey? When was it ordered? I want a date. Okay, well, it wasn't ordered yet because uh, the buyer hasn't supplied an extra document or so-and-so. Wait a minute. That would have been good to know a couple weeks ago. You need to know when these things are ordered. It needs to be written down if you're not ordering them yourself. But if you're not, then you're making a big mistake. Okay, with a selling agent in FISBO where the sellers are representing themselves, scenario, it's not the title company's job to be the other agent or babysit the deal. Okay, the title companies, you can't utilize them as your second agent. It's not up to them. It's not a responsibility. And I mention this because I, this happens a lot and I see it, you know, and I hear about it. I owned the top title company for a couple of years a while back. I've seen it all and I know exactly what happens. And this just the tendency, especially with some agents that are just less experienced, they'll tend to rely on more and more on the title company. Okay, if you do that, you're going to be just like this scenario here. You're going to get burned. All right. All right. Well, that's it. I hope this video helped. Hey, if you don't mind, subscribe to my channel. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to hit me up and ask me. Like I said, I don't mean to ruffle any feathers, make anybody mad, but I want to share real life experience. And this is it. So if you're doing a FISBO and you're selling your house on your own, watch your back. Be careful. But hire me. I'll be glad to help and show you and I'll save you a ton of money. Anyway, appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great one.